Every once in a while I get an email from Gearbest asking if I'd like something else to review. So this last time I decided to do something a little different. Now the temperature was starting to drop so I was wearing longer sleeves and thicker jackets. So I decided to look for something a little thinner this time. Which is where I came across this Siston and it seemed like a really good candidate for what I wanted. It was listed as being 6mm tall with an automatic, sub second hand, and sapphire crystal. But that's all only partially true. Now this is definitely one of those situations where they took some liberties making the product page. But we'll all get to that in time. But let's first start taking a look at the specs, both what they listed and what's real. So spec wise, the watch is listed as 40 millimeters, but it's really 42. With the crown, more like 45. So the watch is a little large of a platform for a dress watch, but it's okay for some. Lug to lug is just over 47, so it's not too bad there. Yet thickness is where the major sticking point is here. Spec wise, it's listed as six millimeters, which would actually be incredibly thin. And the case itself is actually six millimeters, if you leave out the case back and the crystal. So it's a little bit of some deceptive advertising here. In reality, the total thickness is close to 12, which overall is not bad, but not quite what I was expecting. Lug width is 22, which again is large for a dress watch. And in many ways, the overall size here is very close to a V4 Bambino. Now it has a minimal water resistance of 30 meters and it's rather lightweight at 60 grams. Now price is a tricky one here, as I've seen it fluctuate from 60 to 110 over the last few months. The case is listed as stainless steel, and the finishing is good, at least on the front. The rear is a little bit of a different story, as the edges of the lugs are a little sharp, and you can feel the crystal in the case back as it sticks out just a little. And if you haven't already noticed, the rear crystal is attached to a snap-on case back, which is unfortunate. At this price, even on the low end, I think you really should have a better case back. A nice sized crown is at the three, and I really like the pattern on it, sort of a double gnarled pattern with the gap in the middle. Which leads to the crystal, which does have a nice straight edge to it before it starts to curve to a dome. The spec sheet lists it as mineral, yet the case back says sapphire, so I performed a few tests to check. Now interestingly, it does seem to pass the water drop test, yet fails the heat conductivity test, also known as the diamond tester. So if I had to guess, I'd say it's a mineral with some sort of coating on it. Although this is a good example of how the water drop test is not 100% conclusive. Overall, I think the case shape and crystal are quite good. Now it's a little larger and not quite as thin as I'd thought, yet I think it's still thin enough for most people. Now there is a bigger downside to the crystal, which I will get to in a little bit. But I will mention that there does appear to be a smudge right in the middle of the crystal on the inside, as no matter how many times I wiped the crystal clean, it was always there. Below that we have the dial which I really like the overall design of it quite a bit. It's a light blue, or more aqua, in a sunburst pattern. And you should notice early on that the sub second hand also has a sunburst effect, usually in a different direction from the main part of the dial. Now the overall dial has some layers. The main center layer is slightly sunken from the chapter ring and hour indicators, which is separated by a small silver border. The hour indicators are applied with the chapter ring painted on, whereas the sub second hand is slightly sunk. The hour indicators and hands are silver to contrast the dial, although the contrast could be better, but more on that in a second. And you do have a quick set date at the three, which is very nicely framed. Overall, I'd say that this dial has a very nice design and is rather well thought out. It's just that it really wasn't tested out let alone put together with proper care. In fact, this is where this watch really seems to fall apart here. Now let's start with the design. As I said, I like it, but between the reflective blue dial and the reflections that come with the domed crystal, there's just so much going on 
and not enough contrast between the hands, indicator, and dial to make this watch really usable. Now, when you combine a domed crystal and a reflective blue dial, you're gonna have some reflection issues. There really isn't any way around it. But there are ways to deal with it better than this. And the San Martin Fleeker is a perfect example of how to do it better. There's just so much contrast between the hands and the dial and the indicators that everything just pops when you look at it. That your eyes are really able to focus on what matters rather than the distraction. The thing is, I really, really want to like this watch, but after wearing it off and on for a while, I've just found too many situations that I thought it was unusable. The lighting conditions need to be just right in order to appreciate the dial. And even then, forget about looking at it straight on. You'll mostly just see yourself. Now, if the smudge on the crystal wasn't annoying enough, looking at this with a macro lens, there's a little bit more to be annoyed with. Looking closer, there's a lot of specks of dust here, let alone some scratches on the indices, specifically at the three. Overall, it's just poor quality control here, and just winds up being disappointing in real world use. Which overall is kind of sad, because as I said, the overall dial design is quite nice. Perhaps the black dial version would be better, but I can't say for certain. Now let's start wrapping things up and move to the movement. The movement's finishing is quite nice, but it is unmarked, so I'd just be guessing at what the brand and model number is. Now I believe it to be a standard beat rate, and I did test it out to 45 hours of power reserve. It does have a quick set date, hand winding, but no hacking. So if I had to guess, I'd say this is based off a of Miyota movement. Accuracy though was quite good, gaining only a second and a half a day. Strap wise is what you'd expect. It's a black crocodile style leather strap. Although I'd say the quality is maybe a little better than some of the others I've gotten at this price. Not a lot though. And even though this is a little on the large side for a dress watch, I'd still say it wears quite nice. It's just, it's really hard to use while wearing it. It all just depends on the lighting conditions. Now, I don't really want to call this one a complete failure, but it is pretty close. If the blatant exaggerations in the spec wasn't enough to make you want to stay away, then the failure in quality control with the smudges and the dust should solidify that. Not to mention the failure in actually being able to use the watch. Which is why I think it's so important to actually wear a watch for a while before doing a review. If I was just to open the box and tell you what I thought immediately, this would be a whole different story. I just found myself in too many different situations where I was unable to focus on the hands and just too distracted by the reflection to really use this. Which is why I recommend you don't buy one. At least the blue version. Although the black one might be a little better if you're willing to risk the QC issues. And as a future reference to Sistan, a little bit of AR coding could have gone a long way here. Now let me know in the comments what you think about this. And especially if you have any ideas what's going on with the crystal. As well as if you think I should look at any other systems or just don't trust what they say at this point. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again.